There's only one thing stopping an electric car from being cheaper than a gasoline, petrol or diesel powered car. One thing, and that's about to change. In fact, it's already changed, but it's about to change even more than what it's already changed, if that makes sense. Car batteries have gone, come down in price over the past six months by a staggering 20 to 30%. But experts are saying 10% further reductions in price are about to hit the market. What does that mean for electric cars? Does it mean you should hold off? Well, maybe. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. Great to see you. Thank you for tuning in. I'm Sam Evans. You're watching The Electric Viking. Isn't this an incredible pivotal moment in the history of humankind, the greatest disruption in the history of the planet? Now, that's not hyperbolic. That's simply fact. Uh, remember when we used to all ride around on horses? How different is life today as a result of things like bicycles, electric bicycles, electric anything, petrol powered anything? We completely changed the way we lived as a result of being able to fly on airplanes and drive cars, get in buses. The world is such a different place. Electric cars have long been considered to be a bit of a problem because they're more expensive. And one thing was basically making that happen, the cost of the battery pack. Well, a research firm says that EV battery prices will continue to decline over the next 12 months. In fact, they're saying that in only a single month, last month, electric battery prices dropped by 10% on average worldwide. That's a single month. What does that mean for the future of an internal combustion engine vehicle, whether that's a tractor or a car or a truck? Well, it means they're dead. It's that simple. Historically, the cost of electric vehicle batteries has been the main factor contributing to the higher upfront cost of an electric car compared to traditional internal combustion vehicles. However, EV battery costs have been falling over the years, making vehicles more accessible and enticing to consumers. In fact, batteries now are nearly one-tenth the price of what they were when Tesla first began making electric cars. Market research firm, firm Trendforce released a report only a few days ago showing that the price of batteries used in electric cars and energy storage dropped by 10% worldwide in August as a result of the slowing demand for vehicles worldwide and as a result of the fact of what I've seen, what I've been saying for a while that people don't realize because they're blindsided by Toyota's nonsense and lies, we have more than enough batteries that we need. Right now, there is so many battery factories worldwide that are simply not operating at full production because they don't have enough orders. So all these claims from who? Volkswagen Group, General Motors, Ford, Toyota, everyone else saying, oh, well, we'd make more EVs if we could. There isn't enough batteries. They're straight out lies. They are. They're, they're just completely false. The world's biggest battery manufacturer, CATL, is only running at 60% capacity because it doesn't have the orders to hit 100%. So this nonsense about there not being enough batteries is completely false. So why a battery pack prices going down. Well, we know lithium prices have come down. We know that sodium batteries are making an emergence on the market, but they're not, there's not only sodium, there's iron flow batteries. There's all different kinds of battery technologies that are converging to bring the prices down. The other thing is advancements in scale, economies of scale, technological improvements to energy density, and of course, increased competition. For starters, improvements in battery chemistry and manufacturing processes have led to enormous production cost reductions. We all thought, right, CATL and BYD, we, we heard the battery prices that they're advertising very low, very low, 40% lower than most of their competition. Of course, we're talking primarily LFP, lithium ion phosphate batteries, which have improved drastically over the years, but very low prices. We all thought, well, how are they making a profit on batteries at these prices? The media told us it was all a bunch of nonsense. The truth was that they were making billions of dollars. The most valuable company now, privately owned, in other words, not owned by the Chinese government, in China is CATL. The second most valuable, BYD. The automotive industry is such a huge wealth driver. 
and CATL and BYD just made record profits this year. In July of 2023, Toyota announced a breakthrough. I don't believe people believe their breakthrough, but they announced another breakthrough. They did announce the same exact breakthrough back in 2014, by the way, I should say, that would see a new solid state battery technology cut the cost of EV batteries by 50%. They said, for both our liquid and our solid state batteries, we are aiming to drastically change the situation where current batteries are too big, heavy, and expensive. In terms of potential, we will aim to halve all of these factors, said Kaiji Kaita, president of the Japanese auto firm's research and development center for carbon neutrality. Now, of course, big claims and not a lot of substance or patents or anything else to back up those claims. Not a lot of factories. In fact, that's probably more important than a patent, actually having a real factory in place and actually having production lines in place. We know that takes years. We don't know that Toyota has that. Stellantis have made similar claims. They said they're going to bring down the actual weight of battery packs by 50%. If you were able to do that, you could significantly reduce the size of a battery in a car and get the same range. However, there is more competition and it's coming from legitimate competitors, not from companies like Toyota. It's coming from EV battery makers in South Korea and in China and in Europe and in North America. Many countries have also offered incentives and subsidies to encourage customers to purchase more EVs for environmental reasons. EV sales have gone up significantly. They're up by more than 60% this year. These initiatives help to decrease EV battery prices because all the reasons we mentioned before, particularly economies of scale. Third, as more companies start producing EVs, competition continues to grow to increase and this gives customers more options allowing them to demand more cost competitive prices for example if you're tesla you can play your suppliers off against each other tesla can potentially use batteries from about seven different manufacturers in its evs it's fully capable of doing so it's fully capable of changing those batteries in or out but almost interchangeably with different brands very very quickly I mean, why exactly did Tesla begin using BYD blade batteries in its Tesla Model Y in Germany? Well, yeah, CATL will tell you exactly why they did it, to drive down the price that CATL was giving Tesla. Tesla need to make a profit on affordable electric cars. That's how they're doing it. The batteries are costing them far less than what they were two years ago. Trendforce reported that the demand for EVs was lower than production and that there was a decline in the cost of lithium ion phosphate cells that the market hadn't been talking about it because this isn't really public information. Due to weak demand outside of China, prices for batteries used in energy storage have also fallen, leading battery manufacturers to reduce production in an effort to stabilize costs out of the research firm, according to Reuters. With a glut in China's battery cell production capacity, a price war appears unavoidable, with a combined gradual price decline expected for the rest of the year. Therefore, even though Tesla has in fact reduced its, the price of its EVs, and analysts have said this is terrible, it's shocking for Tesla, their gross margins are going to fall, they have come down, but they won't probably come down anymore. And this is the key reason why the, the amount of money it's paying for its batteries will continue to decline. Can you say the same thing about the amount of money that manufacturers of internal combustion engines are paying for their engines? Are they going to come down by 50%? I mean, is Volkswagen Group and Toyota, uh, GM and Ford, are they, the price of their engines going to magically drop by 50%? I'd say probably not. Therefore, it's likely within 24 months, electric cars will be cheaper, not only to manufacture, but to run at the same time than internal combustion. This changes the game entirely for companies like BYD and Tesla who put themselves in position to actually beat their competition. 100% of the cars they're selling have a large battery pack in them. This is a huge advantage for companies that are selling a high percentage of EVs and it's a huge advantage for customers wanting to move to a newer, better product. Battery prices can vary significantly depending on several factors including the type of battery, the chemistry, of course, its capacity, and whoever the manufacturer is. 
Typically, EV battery prices are reported in terms of cost per kilowatt hour. To give you an idea on the costs, in 2021, the cost of lithium ion batteries, ternary batteries like an NCA or NCM chemistry, like the chemistry found in a Tesla 2170 cell, a Panasonic 2170 cell, or a 4680 cell, the most popular type of batteries used in EVs dropped to between $100 and $200 per kilowatt hour, depending on the type. This amount was significantly lower than prior years. Due to their promise for improved energy density and safety, solid state batteries, which are considered the next step in battery technology, were anticipated to cost more than traditional lithium ion batteries. However, as the technology advances, prices also are decreasing. Ultimately, when solid state batteries do hit the market, this will just be yet another driver of reduced costs for batteries like LFP. Now keep in mind, the energy density of batteries like LFP, in fact, almost all battery manufacturers have improved their energy density by around 5% over the past 12 months. 5% per year, that all adds up very quickly. Cost reductions, battery energy density improvements, better battery pack volumization, meaning lighter weight, structural battery packs, meaning even lighter weight, all of those technologies combine and converge to meaning within a couple of years, at most by the end of 2025, EVs will be cheaper to produce and cheaper for customers to buy. Therefore, disruption will be rapid, terrible for places like Japan, who are absolutely not ready for this incredible disruption. Ultimately, what does this mean? Should you wait to buy an EV? Well, I mean, put it this way. If you bought an Apple iPhone 5 and you waited to buy an Apple iPhone 7, yes, the 7 would be better. And yes, your iPhone 5 would be very, very obsolete by the time the 7 arrived in the market. But the other thing is, you wouldn't have get to have had the pleasure of owning an iPhone 5 for the two years before the 7 arrived. I would say EV prices are very, very good today. Just haggle, shop around, get the best product. Stay tuned to the channel and I'll keep updating you on what I think those are. Thank you for watching.